what's up youtube welcome back to the studio so yes i know i've been slacking on the bleach review episodes for episodes four or five and last night's episode or yesterday's episode episode six and there's a reason why i have not done these episodes yet and you're gonna like how i do this well hopefully you like now how i did it and if you don't like it then leave me let me know in the comments below and i might keep doing videos like this or i might not keep doing videos like this but pretty much pretty much i wanted to do the all three episodes and one sit down it's not gonna be a major long video because you know it's pretty much the continuation of the quincy's attacking the soul society so it was just pretty much episodes four was when the quincy showed up episode five is pretty much in the middle of it episode six is pretty much the climax of it then episode seven which is next week's episode will be pretty much the aftermath of what all went down in the in the quincy invasion now before we get into this like comment subscribe share with your fam friends and family that love anime gaming and also comics and also give you guys a little special like a little I guess update or something i won't be uploading no videos next week so there won't be no bleach no chainsaw man no pretty much nothing i'm gonna drop one more video this week that has something to do with the pokemon games that's coming out friday but next week nothing because i'm gonna start you know redoing my whole channel because it's a five-year anniversary and it's five years of me having a youtube channel so i'm gonna read try to redo everything not everything so like the intro is gonna stay the same uh i just made this anime and chill intro so that's new to the channel and all that stuff i used to do it back in the day but now it's something different but um yeah so let's go on and get into episodes four five and six breakdown of bleach <laughs> So in episodes four or five and six, we are getting the Quincy's attacking the Soul Society. Now, as we left off from the last couple episodes, we were just seeing like, okay, what are they going to do? Who are these people? Are we going to learn more about these people? We're still in the early episodes of the arc. So we're still getting to see, you know, captains returning, you know, fan favorites. Then we're going to we're getting to learn a little bit more and more about each of the stern ritters because we learned that's what the name of the group is the stern Rit ritters and also the wonder rich i i can't tell who is with what is what i don't know if they're called the stern ritters or the, or the wonder rich so we're just gonna call them the stern ritters for right now and in the first at the end of the third episode ijigo was captured in jay's little special ability that he can do pretty much j stands for jail and that's what he can do he can put put you in this little orb that's unbreakable you can't get free but we don't know if that is the case when he's dead because by the end of episode four he's de he's dead he dies we don't know who killed him it wasn't Udahara because Udahara was looking at him like hey yo, i thought i thought i thought i killed you but some people are saying it was grim Jow, and hopefully it's grim Jow because he is a fan favorite like i said a lot of the fan favorites are returning now majority of the next two episodes take place in the soul society because that's where the quincy's attacked now the stern raiders pop up and yamamoto is all like okay so they come to us instead of us coming to them okay so as he's just standing there in his little office just watching the chaos unfold we got byakuya and renji going up against knocked which is f knocked stands for uh, the f stands for fear because he likes to feed into your fears like it's something and you can tell by his just his design that just the way that kubo designed this character is okay this dude's gonna be a freaking nature somehow some way you could tell when a character just by looking at them like okay he gonna be that guy we really gonna have to watch because he he probably on some weird bullshit and he, and he is and he is because what it is is every, his little little spikes that he has that's a surround around him if you get either either scratched by it or attacked by it you get to experience your fears so as people are just hanging in midair being stabbed by that little spike of his they are also screaming like screaming their lungs out because they're experiencing their fears and the same thing happens to Byakuya when he gets hit by one he ends up seeing Rukia and he sees Rukia as normal but then she just starts to decay so his fears are coming to life as as we as you know this episode unfolds and as 
the episode unfolds, we also learn that the really creepy captain, you know, the weird looking one that we're talking about, that I that I always talk about, he's also in my top five of favorite captains. Muri, he's upset with the captains right now as well, because as they are fighting, then, you know, the invaders, he's trying to figure out why are these Quincy's trying to, you know, what are they trying to do to their bunkai? By the time he gets to the captains with the information that they are stealing bunkai, it's kind of too late because Byakuya get his stolen by not, um, what's his name? The ice dragon guy. Uh, I usually forget names, so bear with me, but you know, he has lieutenants, the big booby lieutenant. He loses his as well. So it's like this, this the fan favorite captains are losing their bunkai. And I see a lot of people that have not read the manga. They're not really happy about that. So as they're, as Byakuya is still fighting not, Renji's trying to help out too, but he's telling Byaku is telling Renji to step back, like, hey, don't use your uh your bunkai because they still bunkai. And he learned that right then and there, you know, trial and error, you know. He stole his bunkai now. Byaku has to fight just with his normal blade. And it does not go well because Noct does the ultimate insult to injury. And he uses Byakuya's bunkai against him and defeats him. Renji couldn't really help because the Hulk Hogan looking motherfucker with the Rey Mysterio mask decided to come out of nowhere and drop kick Renji, sending him flying. Now, where's Rukia at? You're probably wondering where Rukia is at. Rukia was actually on her way to help out her brother, but she happened to come across another Stun Ritter, and that Stun Ritter took her out before she could even even budge because she didn't like the fact that Rukia turned her back on her, and she was like, "Oh, you turning your back on your enemy?" Bet took her out where she stood. Now, things get better as the other chapters go on because we do finally get to see fucking Kimpachi. Kimpachi goes up against some stun redder that, you know, are pretty much jobbers. Pretty much. They're, they're, they're the job squad at this point. These, these three were part of the job squad. Now, I have seen YouTubers break down each stun redder and their ability, but honestly, after watching some of them i'm like yeah okay you broke down their abilities but uh they weren't even in the, in the episode for more than five seconds but hey it's cool that some of these youtubers actually do go deep dive and want to give you all the information about each villain even though they were only on your screen for like five seconds so kimpachi did away with three of them and he ends up showing up to yuha bak which is your majesty that's that's his that's his actual name so i'm finally gave y'all his name yuha bak i've heard people say it differently but it's close to what i just said so kimpachi pulls up a yuha bak and he was like all right time to fight so he and everybody look, also kimpachi's a fan favorite as well so we don't get to see them fight but he handles kimpachi off screen which kind of sucks i really wanted to see that fight but it is what it is so one of yuha bak's subordinates overkill happens to ha be the one to kill yamamoto's lieutenant and this is the part this is i really wanted to know who killed his lieutenant because i wanted to see if they were actually powerful are they gonna play a big role in the story yeah overkill doesn't really play a big role in the story it kind of sucks but i mean like yeah, it is what it is once yamamoto hears that oh overkill oh the stone ridder oh was the reason why his lieutenant is dead oh he pulls up and he pulls up angry the Stern Ritter O uses his lieutenant's bunkai against them and it doesn't even affect them. So what he does is he just walks up to overkill and overkill goes from overkill to overcooked because he just, sw just swings his bunkai and out. Done. We watch overkill go from skin to nothing but dust. And it was actually pretty dope. And from here on until the end of episode six, your boy Yamoto is on demon time. That boy is at 100. Like, I, this is my first time ever seeing his bunkai too. So he pulls up a Yuha Bak. And we see that Kimpachi has been defeated. And it sucks, like I said, to see him being defeated because I'm like, I wanted to see that fight. But I wanted to see Yamamoto do his thing as well. So this whole fucking episode, I can't do this episode justice, y'all. Like, I can't really do this episode justice. As many words, I try to put this in words. I, it, all I can say is this. Go watch this episode because it was fucking dope. Yamamoto's Bunkai watching all the dead Quincy's that he's killed back in the day come to life. Like, it, it, first and foremost, how does fire 
bring the dead back like honestly so many questions no answers but still though so him and you how about go at it they going at going at it and you how is looking like hey okay oh wait i might not be able to beat this dude like hold on it's been a thousand years and okay and i still can't beat you what the fuck so as you can see, he, yeah, Yu Haibak was standing on a pile of all his dead subordinates from back in the day. And the one thing, the one scene I liked the most, the one scene I liked the most was when Yamamoto was bringing back Yu Haibak's people. And he was naming off all the dead subordinates. And I was just like, he was like, Hubert? And I was just like, that's funny. He has a, he, he has a subordinate named Hubert. But still though, it was still really dope to see. But Yu Haibak was still standing his ground though standing his ground but by the end of the episode he is defeated and he was killed but here's where the plot twist come in here goes the twist and i think i guess a lot of people didn't like this twist and i, I, I can understand nobody really likes twists like this but it is what it is kind of find out that you Bak, that wasn't really him it was a clone it was more of a decoy and it was one of his stern ritter i think it was stern Ritter uh y pretty much and so we thought that this Stern Raider was defeated by Kimpachi. Well, come to find out there's twin brothers and they both can do the same, pretty much do the same thing. Um, he was killed. Now, your boy Yamoto, he missing an arm. He used up all his power on this decoy, this clone. The real Yuha Bak comes up. And this part right here, it had your boy lit. Yuha Bak was off in their prison or wherever they keep all their prisoners at. And he went to that prison to speak with a certain somebody by the name of Sosuke Aizen and he says he gave him he gave him a choice he said either you can come with me and help me destroy the soul society since that's what you want to do or I can just leave here Aizen was like nah it's a shame to see the uh, Quincy King do what he's doing right now like it's a damn shame and he was all like fine whatever you don't want you don't want to join me fine you can stay here then because there's a reason why he's on he's talking to aizen there's a reason why he sent somebody after uh ichigo ichigo kenpachi kenpachi soraki uh aizen yamamoto and i think uryu are all issues in yuha box eyes they're all problems they're all things he's trying to get rid of so he can fulfill his plan but Aizen don't want Aizen don't want to work with him. He's telling people to you know hold off Ichigo. He just killed. He's about to kill Yamamoto and Kimpachi. Yeah, Kimpachi is just Kimpachi. So once he goes back to Yamamoto, and lets him know that's like yeah, I just got done talking to um, Aizen. Yamamoto freaks the fuck out. He was like, what the fuck? Wait, what? Why? Why are you talking to Aizen? He's like, it's all good, bro. He not he not on our side. No how, no way. But. I'm still gonna kill you though. And he kills Yamamoto right then where he is, where he stands. So, like I said, I can't do this episode justice. You really, truly, truly gotta go watch it for yourself. I apologize for the car engine in the background. Somebody loud ass truck wants to go off all of a sudden. But um, I can't do this episode justice, ladies and gentlemen. Like honestly, I truly can't. Y'all gotta go watch it for yourself. The animation, beautiful. Just everything that they showed in this episode, beautiful. The fight scenes, beautiful. Aizen popping up. I could have sworn in the manga he was sitting in a chair, but it don't matter because this shit here is still fucking dope. I give this episode a 10 out of 10 until like the next episode. Cause man, Bleach, the thousand year blood arc, blood war arc, chef's kiss. It's, it's already starting off good. Really, really, really good. And if you ain't watching it yet, hopefully, hopefully me hyping it up will have you go and watch it. But other than that, guys, that's all I got for y'all. More Bleach stuff coming soon. I actually want to start talking about the Stern Ritters that have just died. So be looking out for videos based on each member that just died. So each member that dies, I'm going to do a video on them. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know if, if 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 they are cool and they're fascinating enough i'll do it but other than that guys i hope y'all take care of yourselves uh peace